So, Billy Jean, your what do you want? What do you mean? With your hair, what do you want to do with it? Oh. <laughs> um, it, it doesn't matter. You need to get it on my face. You don't care about how you look? Someone as pretty as you? I'm not pretty. I mean, I don't. I thank you for for saying that. What's your name again? Marilyn. The press release. Ah, oh, yes. It says here that you're offering the men's winner twelve thousand dollars and one thousand five hundred to the women's. Those are the terms. The men's prize needs to be that high to attract the best players. We're trying to make this the most prestigious tournament in America. And paying the women less than ever makes it more prestigious. Uh... It's just simply a question of what we can afford. And people pay to it's... see the men play. They're mm -hmm. the draw. They're eight times more of a draw? Sorry? You're offering the men's winner exactly eight times what you're offering the women's winner. Do we bring in an eighth of the crowd? I don't know percentages, but... Well, they sold the exact same amount of tickets to the women's final today as the men's. Isn't that right, Jack? Today, yeah, I suppose so. Same sales, same prize money makes sense to me. Oh, come on, be reasonable. I mean, there's no way that we could afford that. What's your argument, Jack? Well, for one thing, the men have families that they have to support. Well, I'm the main breadwinner in my family. Yeah, yeah, look. The men are simply more exciting to watch. They are. They're faster. Fact. And they're stronger. Fact. And they're more competitive. Just a fact. It's not your fault. It's just biology. That's not my point. We sell the same amount of tickets. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. Put her there. All right, great. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I love women, in the bedroom and in the kitchen, but That's these days know. they want to be everywhere, they want to be doing everything. Where is it gonna end? Pretty soon us fellas aren't gonna be able to go to a ball game, we're not gonna be able to go fishing, we're not gonna be able to stop and have a drink after work, and that's what this whole women's <laughs> lip thing is about, and it's gotta stop, and Bobby Riggs is the man to stop it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Custer's last stand. This is the lobber versus the liver. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking, Bobby. The more nonsense you spell, the worse it's gonna be when you lose. <laughs> well, I'm the ladies' number one. I'm the champ. Why would I lose? Because well, dinosaurs can't play tennis. <laughs> I'm gonna put the show back in chauvinism. It's Bobby, Bobby Riggs. Bobby? How'd you get my number? Called every hotel in San Diego. Listen. I had a great idea. Okay. Well, it's after midnight, Bobby. So can we talk another time? You and me, Billie Jean. Three cents, five cents, your choice. Are you drunk, Bobby? No, of course not. How about this? Man versus woman. Male chauvinist pig versus hairy leg feminist. No offense. You're still a feminist, right? No, I'm a tennis player who happens to be a woman. That's right. That's exactly who you are. And I am a tennis player who happens to be a man. Think of the publicity that we get. Think of the money. No. 35 grand. Where'd you get the kind of money? You see, you see, you're tempted. I'm really not. I'm not interested, Bobby. Good night. Don't hang up. Don't hang up. And by the way, I shaved my legs. I'd like to... Hello? Eureka, Billy Jean! It's Bobby, Bobby Riggs. Listen, I had a great idea. Male chauvinist pig versus hairy leg feminist. No offense. You're still a feminist, right? I'm a tennis player who happens to be a woman. Don't hang up. And by the way, I shaved my legs. We are privileged tennis fans to have the great Billie Jean King. Word is you are a renegade. Women should be paid and respected equally. I admire what you guys are doing. You're offering the men's winner eight times what you're offering the women's winner. The men are simply more exciting to watch. It's just biology. <laughs> I am not saying that women don't belong on the court. Who would pick up the balls otherwise? Oh, my God. You know what I'm doing? I'm cooking. 
I'm cooking. There isn't a single thing I don't hate about Bobby Riggs. $100,000 to any woman who can beat Bobby Riggs. <laughs> Is she out there and does she have the nerve? Call Bobby. Tom, it's on. So, Billy Jean, what do you want? Whatever I may feel, I can't act on it. There's too much at stake. Business, sports, you name it. The very top, it's the man's world. If I can't beat Bobby Riggs, he's never gonna let it go. We are live in three. I'm gonna be the best. Two. The way I can really. One. Change things. When we dare to want a little bit more, just a little bit of what you got, that's what you can't stand. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna put the show back in chauvinism. He can talk all he likes. Dinosaurs can't play tennis. Oh. 40 million people are watching. Any last words? I'm done talking. Let's play. The battle you've all been waiting to see. The battle of the sexes. Hello? Eureka, Billy Jean! It's Bobby Riggs. I had a great idea. Male chauvinist pig versus hairy leg feminist. You're still a feminist, right? It's called Battle of the Sexes, and it's about Billie Jean versus Bobby Riggs. Billie Jean King, already a champion of women's rights, is now the most successful female player of all time. Billie Jean is probably the first professional woman athlete that I really took note of. So the attention that it brought to women's sports was huge. I am not saying that women don't belong on the court. Who would pick up the balls otherwise? Oh, my God. Bobby was a hustler, a promoter, and he was a showman, apart from being a great tennis player. When Bobby beat Margaret Court, who was at the time the number one player, and women were publicly humiliated, Billie Jean knew she had to come in and set the record straight. I could beat Billie Jean King. Does she have the nerve? Call Bobby. Tell him it's on. Billie Jean in that era was going through so much pressure, professionally and personally. So, Billie Jean, what do you want? I'm gonna be the best. That way I can really change things. She's always been driven by effecting social change. And tennis was really the vehicle because she was so great at tennis, it really gave her a voice. Business, sports, you name it. At the very top, it's the man's world. This was a big moment. Tennis was popular, but that was crazy to play in a football stadium. 40 million people watching. The whole world was watching. It's like the sporting world's version of the moon landing. The battle you've all been waiting to see. The battle of the sexes. Hey, so I hope you liked the video. Now stay with me as I have an interesting behind the scenes movie fact from Anchorman. Now in the famous scene where Paul Rudd speaks to Will Ferrell about Sex Panther Cologne, remember? Wow, never ceases to amaze me. What cologne are you gonna go with? London gentleman or, wait. No, 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 hold on. Blackbeard's delight. No, she gets a special cologne. It's called Sex Panther by Odeon. It's illegal in... Well, Paul Rudd was determined to make Will Ferrell laugh and break character, since it was always the other way around. He thought that this would be accomplished with the 60% of the time it works, every time line that he improvised. But Will fired back with doesn't even make sense without skipping a beat, once again making Paul and others break character yet again. I actually think it would be hard to keep a straight face when working with Will Ferrell. What about you? Now, if you haven't already done it, subscribe and click the notification bell to receive the latest trailers and other cool videos the moment they are online. See you next time.